Peace Deep Minds 255 here. What up? Discussing God of High School first on this week's uh, Webtoons discussions. Now, for this episode, it's pretty interesting. I don't know if the writer is planning to make Mori Jin's as the God of Heaven really shown and to make Mori Jin to really express how powerful Mori Jin is by having him tap into his deepest power, but his current power up is not enough to deal with something like this. Nugent Park is literally on God level. Like God said, let there be light. Nugent Park said, stop, and half their bodies were missing. Sure, I get it. The other characters um, did not immediately die, but he put a hole and one, and he dropped Dean like it was nothing. So I'm really interested to see what they're going to do with Musion Park and what they're going to, how they're going to play this out. I don't know what type of plot armor he's going to need for Mori Jin, but so far in the story, Mori Jin has not needed plot armor because he is, he's supposed to be like the Supreme God. And then there's Maitreya, who's also supposed to, supposed to be the uh, other Supreme God. So we'll see. I guess Mori Jin being a god, that allows that. But this is really a great show of omnipotence. And we're really seeing how much Mujin Park despises humanity. And that they're praying to him, asking him for help. They don't hate him. and But to them, it's just pathetic. It makes him sick. And so he goes to destroy them. Anyway, that's just my commentary this week for God of High School. Now it's time for Hardcore Leveling Warrior. Ethan is back, and it's good to see him. One of the things that makes Ethan and Hardcore Leveling Warrior such a great character is you don't really need plot armor for Hardcore Leveling Warrior versus maybe somebody in a, in a Shonen Jump because Ethan literally has the ability to figure out situations from his intelligence and the things that are going on around him. But for example, Ethan's fighting No Name, and No Name is obviously the queen of the nightmare. She has a lot of omnipotent power. And yes, Ethan gets saved in the end, but you see that she had to get plot armor. That's the type of intelligence and the type of character Hardcore Leveling Warrior is that he's such an intelligent character, he has the ability to use all these elements around him that the author has to give the the omnipotent antagonist, so to speak, the, the, the plot armor to deal with him. And you can't complain about Hardcore Warrior's power-ups because you look at his lucky coin stat, he has to use whatever's given to him. And whatever's given to him, that's what he uses to get over his situations. And it's the same thing with the Queen of Nightmares. If that, if whatever other power that was had not interfered, would Hardcore Lovely Warrior have lost? I don't know, uh, you know? Probably not, because it's Hardcore Lovely Warrior. But uh, pretty interesting to see. Maybe we'll get to see a rematch with them. I'm not sure what's gonna happen later on. I am fully caught up, but, but I can't uh, spoil anything. But uh, this is where Ethan shines the most. Ethan shines the most when he's up against characters that are much stronger than him. And he has to figure out a way to, to, to beat them. And, that, and we love Ethan also when he's omnipotent because he really shines. Because even when he's being omnipotent, he's still using his powerful abilities. But uh, Ethan really shines the most when, he's, when the odds are against him and he has to to come back on people. Like that time he was fighting that monster and he had to figure out how to um, beat him. And so Hardcore Lovely Warrior had him send himself back to his prime when he was stronger. That's the type of stuff you love about Ethan. You might be in a call it plot armor, but you can't argue that his his skill is, is intelligence and therefore it's, it's technically not plot armor. All right, this is DeepMind255, out.